Break, continue, and exit are three statements that are really used to end something early, usually a loop. If you watched my video on switches, you'll notice that I used break in a switch statement. A switch statement may not be a loop, but break was still used to end the statement early. Just in case you missed it, here's an example of a switch statement using the word break. I start off with using the word switch, and then in parentheses I check some sort of value. In this case I'm using the function iRandom. iRandom is a function that will select an integer between 0 and the number you put in the parentheses. In this case I just put the number 1, so it can choose 0 or 1. Then I just write some case code depending on which number it chose. In case it chose 0, then my variable will equal 0. And then I use break. This tells the switch statement to end early. It doesn't have to do anything else that's inside the code block. It can just break away from this switch statement and continue on with the rest of the code. As I said, these three statements are primarily used to end a loop earlier than usual. Here's a very ugly looking pseudocode version of what it would look like to use a break statement inside a loop. We would start our loop, whichever one we choose, and then inside our code block we'd have some sort of code and then, usually if that code is fine and we don't need to continue with this loop, we can just break. But if that code isn't enough, after the break we'd have some more code. To better understand it, here's a break statement inside a repeat loop. I've set this repeat loop to happen 40 times. Inside, I have a variable called my health, and every time it gets looped, it will minus equal damage. I've commented in some numbers to help you out. My health will equal 10, and every time this repeat will loop, it'll minus equal 2. So the next time it loops, it'll be 8 and 6 and so on. But then I throw in an if statement, and it says, if my health is less than or equal to 0, then just break away from this repeat loop. We don't need to do it anymore. I'm already considered dead. But if I'm not dead, I've put a comment to remind myself that later I should write the code to spawn blood splats on the screen. If I didn't break this loop when my health was less than or equal to zero, there would be 40 blood splatters on the screen. However, because I broke early, the game will only draw the amount of blood splats that are equal to the amount of times I got damaged. So in this case, two can only be removed from 10 five times. So five blood splats will appear on the screen. If I didn't have that break, 40 blood splats would appear. Here's an example of breaking a for loop. So I start my for loop with i equaling 0, and if i is less than the width of my room, then we're going to do the code, and then i will plus equal 16. So we'll increment it by 16. Inside the code block, my x position will equal i. So right now, this object's x position will be 0. And then I say, if place empty, where I'm sitting right now at my x and y value, break this for loop. So what's happening is this object is checking to see if where he's sitting is empty. He's not colliding with anything else. But if he's not, then the object's x position will increase by 16 and it'll try it again. And it'll just keep doing this all the way until the width of the room. Here's an example of a break statement within a while loop. First off, I start with a variable called i and I make it equal 0. Then I start my while loop, and my while loop will happen as long as I am not in a free position right where I am at x and y. And if where I'm standing is not a free position, I've written that my x position will equal any random number between 0 and the room width, and my y will do the same but with the room height. So right now, this while loop will just keep randomly putting me in different positions and different positions if I keep colliding with something. Potentially, this loop could go forever. However, I've added an if statement, and it says if i is greater than 50, then we're going to break this while loop. Else, if it's not greater than 50, we'll just increment it by 1. So i is being used as a counter. It starts at 0, and it keeps increasing every time the game puts me in a new position. So really, this is just saying, hey, if we run this code 50 times, just break this loop. We, it didn't work, just stop. Just wherever I landed, just put me there instead. Which is important, because if a loop never ends, your game freezes. So it's important to break your loops. Most of the time you might not even need to use the break statement. 
You could just let the loop keep running until it runs out and then it finishes. But if you want your code to be more efficient, you might as well stop your loop once you've found what you're looking for. Then you can just break. Go on to the rest of the code. It makes your code more efficient. Next I'd like to show you the continue statement. It actually works a lot like the break statement with one small change. Break totally stop the loop. Continue will go back to the top of the loop. Here's an example in a for loop. This for loop establishes a variable called i and it equals zero. Then if i is less than the length of my array, that's what that function does. It just checks how many variables are inside my array. Then it will run the code. And then if the code finishes, we increment i by one. Inside the code block, we have an if statement that says my array i, so right now that's zero, so that means the zero position for my array. If it equals zero, remember double equals is to check something rather than assign a value to a variable. So here's how this is gonna work. If the position of my array that I'm checking is already equal to zero, just hop back to the top of the loop. Don't read the rest of the code. That's what continues doing. It's saying, okay, stop this loop, but then go back to the top and do it again. And the reason for that is, well, if my array at whatever i position we're at is not equal to zero, we're gonna make it equal zero. That's what the next part of the code does. It says my array i, so whatever position we're at, will equal zero. So this code will go through the entire array to its maximum length, whatever the length of the array is, and set every single value to zero. But if it's already zero, there's no reason to set it to zero. Just go right back to the top of the code. So you see, continue and break kind of just make your code a little more efficient once your code has already done what it's supposed to do. It would just be redundant to set a variable's value to zero if it already equals zero. That's just a waste of computing power. Last, we have the exit statement. Exit can function in different ways depending on how it's used. For instance, if it's used in a script, exit will leave the script and then go back to the object that was calling the script. Similar to how we just break out of a loop. For instance, if an object called this script that said, if my health is equal to the maximum health, just exit, don't, don't worry about this, we're already at max health. But if we're not at max health, it says pick up health orb, and my health will now equal health max. Then I can just say on the screen, I'll draw some text that says fully healed. So this would be some sort of healing script whenever we pick up a health orb. So as you can see, it works in the same way that we would use break in a loop. Just if what we're looking for, whatever we're checking in our code, is already fine, it's already doing its thing, then just exit. No need to set my health to its maximum if it's already at its maximum. Once again, that's just a waste of computing power. Now, exit actually has another kind of function. If it's used in an object instead of a script, exit will actually leave the entire event. So like the create event or the step event or mouse click, whatever event you have. So let's say we used a collision event. And when we collide with another object in the room, we can check some things. If other, other is just a tag that's used to call the ID of the other object we're colliding with. So if other dot type, that's a variable that's inside the other object, is equal to player. So if my object collides with another object and we've labeled it as player, we'll do this code, which we just draw some text that says hello, and then it exits, which means it doesn't read the rest of your code at all. It just exits this event completely. So you can keep doing that. For instance, if we didn't collide with a player, what if the other thing we collided with, the type was enemy? Well, we can draw the text, have at thee. Then I've written some comments to remind me to write code later to initialize combat animation and begin a battle. And then it'll exit this collision event. And I could have more code after that as well. So really with these three statements, all they're doing is ending something early so you don't have to continue with code, usually for redundancy, but also if you don't want to execute some sort of other code. And each one is kind of specific as to whether it's used in a loop or a switch statement or a with construct or a script or an object or whatever, but they all function in a very similar manner. And to be honest, you may not even have to use these statements. Your game just may not require them. Just because you have a tool in your toolbox doesn't mean you have to use it, but it's there whenever you need it. <laughs>